Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. Uh, this is Cyrus, so I have been a little less active making videos as of late because I've been moving into a new place as I continue my lockdown here in South Philippines, stuck in the country. Um, but I have a new place, a bigger space, a little bit more room to work, and apparently better Wi-Fi, which means it's easier to upload videos and that is a big plus for sure so uh, to kick things off here in my new place I wanted to uh, kind of do an easy topic and I want to talk about why a supernatural exploration having experiences in this whole realm is better to me it's a better adrenaline sport if you will than any any uh, normal sport I can think of and why it is you know will be a lifelong interest of mine and something I will continually explore and why why I think other people who um, have had experiences in this area may may tend to agree with me. Um, why, if you've never had an experience in this area, you should uh, think about committing some time to trying to have an experience. And again, why I think it is just a lot more exciting than almost anything else you could be doing with your time. Uh, before we go further though, if you are new around here, we discuss basically the ramifications of and the details concerning complex supernatural metaphysical subjects. If you like this kind of thing, I encourage you, please go down and hit that subscribe button to help keep this little channel in operation um, your uh, help is always appreciated in that area all right to continue so in this video I just had some thoughts I wanted to put out there and um, see what happens basically um, uh, you know, what, what is more popular than adrenaline sports what is more popular than you know rock climbing or you know, paragliding or um, um, all types of things uh, windsurfing bungee jumping parachuting right so we're always looking for that adrenaline we're always looking for that thrill a thing that really makes us feel alive and blows our minds and I, I, I partake a little bit in some of that stuff but I'm not not too big on heights although I've been known to play a lot of paintball war games airsoft I don't know if that's considered like a uh, adrenaline sport but yeah to me it is um, some rock climbing but I'm not that good at it I tend to I tend to fall a lot but anyway so you know so I like some of that stuff to an extent but really the thing that I like the most is a supernatural exploration a supernatural types of research and experiences because nothing quite matches the thrill of having a legitimate paranormal or supernatural experience and um, I'll give a few examples and try to explain what I mean so the reason it's so thrilling is that when it's happening you really it's like time kind of slows down because you're trying to process is this real is it really happening and uh, does it you know does that mean that everything that I've researched for so long is is true all all the kind of mythologies about certain topics people debating is it real is it not real like it all comes crashing in on you when you have a real experience happen to you and that alone is very exciting but above that um, even when you've had many experiences when you continue to have experiences uh, each time you have any kind of experience, the fact that you're going so far beyond what would be considered normal, so far beyond the mundane, that you've, you know, you've opened up a whole new world of possibilities. And in that moment, when you're having that experience, it's extremely exciting. And it really is that kind of adrenaline sport. And it's also why I think so many people are actually into ghost hunting, for example, these days, because that is one possible way to have an experience in the super natural. Now, I don't think that these subjects should be thought of merely as some kind of a thrill-seeking endeavor. And that's kind of the, the, the flip side to this because that also damages uh, supernatural research because it's not supposed to just be for thrill-seeking. It's supposed to be for um, genuinely understanding the universe or how reality works and so it does get watered down when it's marketed as something for thrill seeking which is especially in the ghost hunting world but the flip side of the flip side if that makes sense is that even when it's marketed for thrill seeking if somebody can have a legitimate paranormal experience for example going into a haunted house in the tour and they feel someone like grab them on the shoulder 
you know, some friendly spirit person comes in and uh, gives them that experience, then that can open their eyes to a whole, you know, to this whole new world of, of, of how reality operates. So it should not be trivialized, but I think from a mature angle and trying to understand what the information really means, what's really going on, seeking the experiences out as something that provides excitement is okay because it keeps the research, it keeps the interest going. And I do encourage it, but I also encourage people to understand, like, let's say you have a supernatural experience in a haunted house, to be really cliche. You have that experience, but then you need to go deeper and try to figure out, well, what does the experience really mean? If you don't do that, then you get caught in that mindset or that paradigm of things that go bump in the night. Um, things, you know, uh, ghouls and ghosts and goblins and that kind of thing, pop culture, or the idea that there's, you know, that there's ghosts and white robes floating around attics and things like that, or that they're all out to get you, or that, they, you know, that the afterlife is this malevolent place, all this kind of stuff, which we know is, for the most part, nonsense. So proper education is needed once you can have that validating experience. Okay, so next part of this video, I want to talk about some of the experiences that I've had that I consider to be extremely exciting and um, th that I have, you know, incredibly fond memories of. Okay, so one element which we can put into the general kind of paranormal category is UFOs, which is as exciting as everything else I've experienced. I've seen UFOs on multiple occasions, whether it's at the old family ranch or driving on a road late at night going between Tucson, Arizona and, I don't know, Los Angeles or San Diego, California. Uh, I've definitely had experiences on those roads late at night, which can be pretty creepy, but I've also had a lot just at, at our old family ranch when I was growing up. And including uh, just absolutely, you know, there was like no doubt that it was something that was coming from uh, another place. Like you can't mistake it for a flare or anything like that. Like when you watch something come in from orbit and it's not behaving like any aircraft should and um, it, it's extremely bright and has a particular shape or... Things of that nature. You know, I've I've seen all of that. Um, I've also seen like triangular, those kind of delta-shaped craft. Some call them the TR-3B. Could be one of our own craft. It's hard to say, but I've seen that as well as many other people. Um, things things of that nature. Now, did this create a lifelong interest in UFOs? Not really. I'm not really a UFO guy, but I know enough about the subject. I'm pretty well educated. I I tackle it sometimes on this channel about what's really going on in that whole area. But what the point is, is that I can remember having those experiences and they are some of the best memories uh, I can think of. Even if, I, even if at the time I was kind of unnerved or rattled or didn't fully appreciate it, looking back on it, you know, there's nothing better. And um, similarly, you know, we'd have people come out and observe UFOs sometimes because it was kind of a hot spot and they had similar reactions. They, they, you know, at the very least, it was extremely fun and exciting for them which it, it absolutely should be. Okay, so the next area involves um, hauntings, ghosts, and things like that. So some people are, quote, scared of ghosts. For me, I would, I would run towards it. So I had an apartment once which had some weird, like, spirit contact things happening in that, in that, in that apartment. Uh, for example, completely inexplicably a drawer opening by itself. Like, I could be in the other room, there by myself, and I hear a whoosh, or a, or a what, what does a drawer opening sound like? You know, I'll just open this drawer for effect. Like, I'll hear that, right? Something slam, I'll come in, and, you know, I won't know what happened. Or I'll hear the sound of a drawer opening, and then I will come into the kitchen and see that a drawer had just opened by itself. Again, while well, some people will get freaked out, that was in incredibly validating that a super, I quote, supernatural or quote, poltergeist thing could really happen. And I found it extremely interesting, fun, and exciting. Now, again, some people would get creeped out by that. I thought it was amazing, and I think other people with my mindset really liked that also. Okay, next area, of course, are the out-of-body experiences, which I talk about at length on this channel. And, of course, these are the best supernatural experiences that I've had to date. You know, blows the other experiences out of the water because now I am directly enabling something, having facilitating my own experience, tapping into the other side. 
Now, the, I think the most memorable OBEs that I've had, and you know, I've had many, many astral projection experiences, contact experiences, visitation experiences with deceased loved ones, a lot of stuff I talk about in this channel, a lot of stuff I've talked about in the books. The, um, I think the ones that really stand out to me is when I was able to completely verify something was real when I went out of my body still lying on my bed. So when you do that, you know, you can see your astral body move up out of your physical body just like a TV show and someone dies and the ghost floats out of the body. You have a translucent hand coming out of the physical hand laying on the bed and then you pull yourself out of that and float down the hallway. And some of the better experiences of that was messing with roommates, spying on roommates, gathering information, and then validating it when I woke up. And I was able to do that for a while until that ability seemed to just stop and I began having much more astral projection types of experiences, which can also be, you know, incredibly, you know, exciting and uh, really, really cool. So. When it comes to, I guess, the thesis of this video, so when I think back about activities I've done, places I've traveled to around the world, adventures I've been on, uh, you know, sports and things I've played, um, whatever it might be. Uh, when I think back to, you know, a lot of stuff I've done in my life, it's these supernatural experiences that were the most exciting, you know, were the most adventurous, were the most... You know, I mean, um, I don't know if we could call it adrenaline, but it's like truly the most exciting, right? You know, and like nothing else really quite compares to it. And in the future, I do intend to keep stepping this up. And I am interested, especially these days, in the kind of CE5 contact experiences that Stephen Greer talks a lot about. Um, I would love to go and explore that more and check out some places that, um, you know, those types of contact experiences happen I think it helps that you know I don't have any fear in these areas I you know I, I totally believe that if you're in the right state of mind you're not going to have a negative experience there's been a lot of like fear about for example the UFO subject because of so many negative experiences that are ingrained in our in our collective psyche the gray alien and the you know uh, traumatizing abduction or that you know terrifying fictional film called Fire in the Sky, which was a misinterpretation of the Travis Walton uh, incident. Um, so that has enabled all this fear, but the reality is majority of ET experiences are very positive. Now I do think there's some negative ones, but like with a lot of these CE5 contact groups and things I've been hearing about, there's a very you know, interesting documentary called uh, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, a new one by Stephen Greer. And there's an amazing story in that film. I may even do a whole review of the film, but it concerns somebody on one of these experiences, one of these, um, one of these events, uh, like his orange light came in from the sky and he asked this, you know, this visitor, this higher dimensional visitor, if it could, you know, cure his hearing. He was almost deaf and had to wear like very powerful um, um, uh, hearing aids. And it basically was just like, sure, I'll fix your hearing. And then this, basically, this higher dimensional entity from outer space, if you want to call it a UFO, you know, fixed this guy's hearing. It's an incredible story. You know, people can have experiences like that, getting healed. Um, oftentimes, like UFO experiences mesh with astral experiences and then you can go to bed that night and be taken on some you know taken into some ship astrally and shown all this you know shown shown all these cool things i hear about that happening a lot so i guess the point i'm getting at is that all these experiences are really exciting i encourage people to seek them out always do it with the right mindset a lot of positivity um, pro project your positive intentions keep yourself psychically protected make sure you're in a nice positive state of mind and um, go ahead and seek experiences out um, you know go camping in a place that has a high UF rate of UFOs or go to the haunted house or practice out-of-body experiences all this stuff when you can finally have your own real validating experience it really puts the rest that, that inner monologue and debate about whether or not this, this side of reality is, is true or not. And uh, gives further reason, I think, to be skeptical of experts who, you know, who, you know, you, they, can't, they can't take away an experience, okay? You can get, you can get some idiot academic trying to, trying to uh, still push the old, the old idea that all of this has psychiatric explanations, but they can't take away your experience. Remember, in this life, Experts think back to how many experts have been wrong throughout the ages. 
Imagine if you were a time traveler, you went back into the 1920s. Imagine how frustrating it would be hearing experts talking about these ridiculous therapies that, that you would know just as a layperson from the 21st century have, have you know, are not effective at all. And, you, and hearing what experts back then would have to say. Listen, experts, they don't, <laughs> experts can know things, but an expert is very likely to use a lot of authority to try to dictate something that is completely false. And, uh, and when you have a personally validating experience, that trumps whatever the media says and whatever some academic says. That's it for now. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And please share any of your experiences that you found extremely exciting, fun, interesting, and memorable. And I'd love to hear it in the comments down below. If you want to get involved in this group, so we have the YouTube community, which is you're on right now. We have the Facebook community, which is really, really big and really active. We have the Reddit community, which is small, but uh, there's some interesting posts and some, some pretty active posters on there, really interesting subjects. We have the website community down on the right-hand side. Sometimes comments and discussions happening down there. Um, what else? We have the private patron group for patrons. If you want to become a patron over at the, at the $30 and up level, then you can work with me personally, join the group, join the uh, private meetings, all that kind of stuff, the private guest interviews, ask guests questions. So um, there's a lot of different ways that this community is out there now, which I'm really proud of. And so a lot of ways you can get involved and we can keep um, uh, talking about these subjects in a mature way and keep trying to figure this stuff out. So thanks for getting involved and thanks to you guys out for helping me out. Thanks to all the patrons out there who have been able to let me keep doing this work. Um, we have stuff coming out. There's still a third book I'm working on. There's uh, a new YouTube channel I'm working on, which is taking a little bit longer because of distractions and other work priorities, but that's still still working on that. So special thanks to the patrons allowing me to keep this work going and keep these communities going and to the, to the volunteer admins and moderators of the Facebook group. Thanks, everybody. Okay, anyway, uh, that's it for this video. I'll talk to you guys on the next video.